richer and richer um, in terms of what material you are then um, creating with it. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that in actuality there's another continuum going on here of attention to site that can be brought to any site so that we can turn the theater space into a site. Um, and if you look at people like Jerome Bell, I think that that's exactly one thing that he's doing and that that's um, a further layer in this conversation. Other comments back there behind you? <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I think, Joanna, you were starting to s kind of ex talk about this from maybe the performer's perspective, but from the audience perspective with site-specific, um, are there any ways in which, um, I mean, Aaron's piece very much worked um, actively to make the audience not act like a passive audience, um, but Insight specific, I'm wondering if there's any ways in which you guys have actively worked to break down the audience's tendency to behave like the passive audience in a stage, proscenium stage type of setting. Yeah, I mean, either the, the cornerstone or Anna thinking about what I've been hearing about these mask people, or I don't know the other things in the. Stern Grove piece and ways that you're working with that idea. I'm following this. What is the question? I think we're we're really talking about the audience experience and you know, in Aaron's piece they were scrunched into a room and in yeah. Joanna's piece they had to walk and I know that many of your pieces, um, like the circle dance is really about um, the audience participation. And so we were just thinking about what is the audience experience that's different and how do you provoke or engage that? It depends upon uh, with the microphone. <laughs> I think it depends upon your intention and what you happen to be choosing to do on the site. And I think you're referring to the planetary dance, and uh, that that has both a history and it has uh, uh, you know a site and and it has a uh, message. And I think that in in this particular dance the planetary dance, there is no audience. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a participatory event. Mm -hmm. And it's designed so that it's so simple that anybody can do it. It's just a series of circles, but the task is very challenging and it's based on running. And however, it accommodates people of all ages, including children who have their own run. But what makes it, um, I think it's probably, I call it the planetary dance because it's being done in about 36 different countries now because it is so simple. But what uh, really interests me about that piece, which was very accidental, was that um, people are running for a reason. And the reason that they're running is so important to them uh, and they believe so thoroughly in the power of dance that uh, it, it becomes a very powerful experience, not to look at, but to do. They run for some particular thing. In our community, we had a, uh, I don't know if any of you remember, the trailside killer on Mount Tamalpais killed seven women, and we could no longer really use the mountain. So we decided we would try to reclaim the mountain, and we bust up there. We did workshops for a year to prepare people and we bust up there, we did this circle dance. And uh, it was to reclaim the mountain. And about two weeks later, after two years, um, the, the, the killer was caught. So it became a tradition. And every year we took a different cause, whether it was breast cancer, whether it was um, violence in the schools, or whatever the cause might be. And the community, including the children, and the parents and people of all different ages would get together every year and do this ritual. So that, that has been always one of the most fulfilling ways that I've experienced using this site because it's had so much meaning to so many people and it's been so simple. And yet it had, for each person, they believe in it so much. So I, I think it depends. Um, I'm having a struggle with that. At, at, in the Stern Grove project, you know, how, how to break the audience 
performer relationship, but it's a real consideration. Mm -hmm. And I think it's different in each intention that you have. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a question about vocabulary um, in planetary dance, the motivations for running caused the group to begin running and that became the dance. Um, in Aaron's, um, there seemed to be a lot of technical dance vocabulary and um, clear correlation between music and movement, and um, I'm just wondering how your vocabulary emerged from your ideas or, or what your process was like. Um, I did choreograph to music, which I like to do. Um, and I think that, I guess I didn't really stress out about the vocabulary too much on this dance, and I think when I've made pieces for stage, in the past, one of my frustrations was the difficulty in like getting past my movement habits to try and find some movement that's more interesting. But um, in this setting, I was just less concerned about whether the dance movements were interesting. And so I think maybe the, the dance vocabulary that you see in those is just sort of my dance vocabulary, but to me, I was able to stay interested in it because there were characters and sort of objects to deal with. And just like, I just had, for each section, I just had a situation, a really vague situation in mind, you know, like they had a night bef uh, fight the night before, or whatever, and now they're not speaking to each other. And I sort of let that drive things forward. So um, the vocabulary that was dictated by each place was really like, sort of practical, like you're mostly lying down in bed, and the mattress is this like memory foam thing, which really isn't springy at all. So I don't know, like, there are things like that, and you, the fact that we're like dealing with this tabletop and all of these items and stuff, but there is, the dance movement that is, is in there wasn't like <laughs> lovingly, carefully like crafted just for that environment. <laughs> so one of my questions is about the economy and how site-specific dance relates to money. And it's not something that's come up yet, and just it occurs to me that proscenium theater and dance always has a ticket price, and site-specific usually doesn't. And in this current time, it just seems like, wow, what are the possibilities for more site-specific dance? And also, I don't know much about site-specific dance's history in relationship to the economy or how um, dancers before thought about, hey, let's make dances free. Or, you know, if that, if how that has played into it before, I'm just curious what any of the panelists think about that. I would love to segue, Anna, when we talked earlier, you were talking about when you first came here after World War II, and there were just not opportunities to perform because you had to pay so much money to be in a theater with hired musicians. And a lot of your work was really a response. Yeah. I think it's very much in line with what you're talking about. Yeah, it, when I first came here, in order to dance in the theater, you had to hire a full orchestra. Mm -hmm. That was a union regulation. Wow. So <laughs> you didn't dance in theaters. Wow, we think it's tough now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it was better. It's better now than then. Amazing. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no answer for that yeah. in this country. You know, when I went to Paris, I, the dancers were on strike, and I, I thought, what are they on strike about? <laughs> you know, I couldn't figure it out. They were on strike because they weren't being paid enough. They get paid every year. If you do five performances, you're considered a professional, and the government pays you, whether you're performing or in between. Huh? So it, it's just a value system, cultural value system in our country. You know, you have to learn to be a very slick, proposal writer and get some good reviews and uh, it's 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 terrible it's really terrible i have no answer for it <laughs> never have i did partially do this project because it seemed doable and i've you know i've self-produced in theaters and all that